Welcome to Prophecy Countdown. We provide two updates each week on this channel. Uh, our, on Sundays, our messages premiere at 1 p.m. and then on Wednesdays at 11 a.m. The title of my message today is, this is number 372, God's Prophetic Stopwatch. And this is part two, as we're gonna continue our conversation on how God has a very specific timeline for both the people of Israel as well as for the church. As the name of our podcast implies, our podcasts always have a prophecy thread. We love answering questions, particularly about prophecy, but actually any question that you may have on theology, on the Bible, uh, send us an email at prophecycountdownpodcast at gmail.com. That's prophecycountdownpodcast at gmail.com. Uh, we love answering those questions. In fact, you may have a suggestion for one of our upcoming updates. Just send us an, an email. Again, prophecycountdownpodcast at gmail.com. Again, the title of my message today is uh, it's number 372. It's God's Prophetic Stopwatch Part 2. And as we said last week, we're doing something a little bit different, actually offering uh, two different updates over a period of two weeks. Um, but what Daniel, what was revealed to Daniel about the 77s from the angel Gabriel was very specific and very unique, and I really need a little bit more time than just 15 to 20 minutes to talk about it. The Old Testament, Dan, Old Testament prophet Daniel um, understood that there was a very definitive time period reserved for Israel. And we talked about that last week. Now this week we're looking again to God's prophetic stopwatch and we'll turn to what we know as the age of the church. You know, we often use that word age. It's referring to a particular time that was unique compared to the time period before or after. You may even have some examples in your own life. For example, when we talk about uh, historical time periods, we'll talk about the Middle Ages, a specific time period, um, or the modern age. As we began to describe last week, not only can we describe specific differences when it comes to Bible history, um, but there's also ages involved with that as well. For example, uh, we have the time before Abraham, right? The pre-Adamic time, which is before Adam. Uh, the Mosaic era, having to do with, uh, with, with Moses. Oh, and here's one, I like this one, which is antediluvian. Antediluvian is the time before the biblical flood. However, what I'm specifically talking about today are the unique two-part message, and this unique two-part message is the period of time between Daniel's 69th and 70th week. Now, if you didn't hear our podcast last, last week or you need a refresher, I'm referring to the biblical prophecy that was given by the angel Gabriel to Daniel on what was called the 77s or 70 weeks. To recap what we talked about, Daniel was in Babylon. Uh, with the rest of the people from, from Judah. They were outcasts. And Daniel, as a prophet, was aware that one of his contemporaries, the prophet Jeremiah, had prophesied that the people of Judah would be conquered by Babylon, but then they would be able to return to their land after a period of 70 years. Now, Daniel's a, a man of God. And he begins to pray and make intercession for the people. He prayed, for example, that God's anger and his fury against the people in Jerusalem would be turned away. And they were, Daniel prayed, and because they were culpable, the people of Israel had been disobedient and they wanted to be able to return. So while Daniel is praying, the angel Gabriel comes to Daniel. And by this time, Daniel's an older man, likely in his 80s, late 80s, and Gabriel tells him that of a new prophecy, of a new understanding. And he says that, the, Gabriel says that there will be 70 weeks. And what we discover is by 70 weeks, it means 70 periods of seven years or 490 years, 70 times seven. And this was a time period that was reserved for Israel. And it would, during that time period, God would accomplish a number of things, including bringing in the Messiah and establishing the kingdom. And here is where the stopwatch comes in. Daniel is told that the time period begins when an order is given to restore and rebuild Jerusalem. 
when that order came through, and that was King Artaxerxes of Persia, the stopwatch started. Then the angel Gabriel breaks up the time period after this starts into two periods. One, a period of 49 years, that's seven sevens, and the second, 62 sevens, or 62 periods of weeks, that's 434 years, and then the Messiah is cut off, as we know Jesus is crucified. But here's the amazing thing, the stopwatch then stops. You see, there's only 69 weeks so far. Gabriel said there was going to be 70 sevens, and then he goes on and explains there's going to be 7 plus 62. Well, that's 69. There's one week that is remaining. And last week we talked about that. It's very easy to determine through prophecy that the remaining seven weeks is the seven weeks we know as the tribulation. Okay, so that's kind of a recap. Let's go on to part two. Let's talk about the age of the church. Now, this age of the church is, is obvious, and it's because for over 2,000, it's been 2,000 years, basically, since the Messiah has been crucified. He rose from the dead, and he ascended into heaven. What we've seen for these past two years is what is known as the age of the church. You may have heard of it called also the age of grace. Both are just fine. It's synonymous. Notice that this age, however, is completely different than the previous age that just ended. The New Testament is different than the Old Testament. How is it different, you say, Pastor? Well, in a number of ways. We don't see any animal sacrifices. There's no temple. There's no required circumcision. There's no Sabbath festivals. That's just a few of the differences. This is the age of grace. So when did this age begin? Well, again, it's like this prophetic stopwatch. The church was born on a specific day. That day we know is Pentecost. Jesus had told his disciples to stay in Jerusalem and wait for the Holy Spirit. On Pentecost, it was the birth of the church. The Holy Spirit came. There were 120 in the upper room, and the Holy Spirit came with a roar and something like tongues of fire. That's what the book of Acts describes that descended upon all that were there. It was 120 of them. The apostle Peter goes out and preaches to the crowd that day. It was Peter's first sermon. It was actually his best sermon. Uh, over 3,000 of the people in the listening audience were baptized. It's the birth of the church. Now, here's what's important. Don't miss this. There are many today, many in the church, that say that the church has replaced Israel. The thinking is that Israel, the people of the Jews, were disobedient. So God took his covenant back. He said, if you're not going to obey me, then I'm not going to be your God. There's no, they are no longer his chosen people. But the Bible clearly tells us that this is incorrect. It would mean that God would have to break his promise, something that God could never do. Now, when Israel is mentioned in the Bible, it really means Israel, both in the Old and New Testament. And while the New Testament often describes Israel and the church in similar terms, so, so for example, both are the bride of God, the children of God, the chosen people, they both have prophets, kings, and priests, never ever does the New Testament call the church Israel, the people of Israel. So not only has uh, not only has the church not replaced Israel, but I've also intentionally not called this church age that I'm talking about today a dispensation. The Apostle Paul mentions a dispensation, but it seems like any time I mention dispensation, people tune out. Uh, I, I don't want people to tune out. I want them to, to listen for a moment of what we have to say, what the Bible has to say about what we know as the church age. Again, it began on Pentecost, and you can read about it in, in Acts chapter 2. Now, the church age will last until what the Bible calls the fullness of the Gentiles. The fullness of the Gentiles re, re, is related to the last Gentile that is to be saved um, in, during this age. It was the Apostle Paul also that used that term, the fullness of the Gentiles. You know, in, in Romans chapter 11, the Apostle Paul makes a compelling observation. He refers to it as a, a mystery, something that wasn't understood before, that regarding the Jews, he says a partial hardening has happened, and the reason this hardening has happened is because God's stopwatch has paused. 
Guys, stopwatch is paused. After the 69 weeks, there's a pause. There's a hardening that takes place, a partial hardening, according to Paul, in the hearts of the Jews. And this hardness, Paul says, will continue until the fullness of the Gentiles has come in. The context, if you read, this is out of Romans chapter 11. I suggest you read the entire chapter. Uh, fullness of the Gentiles is mentioned in 1125. But the context helps us understand that this partial hardening is and what the fullness of the Gentiles is. Now, the Israel's hardness will continue until a specific time. Well, how long? Well, it's a good question. What will happen? It's when the last Gentile is saved. That's when the end, the end of the church age happens. And what happens at that time is Jesus comes back for his bride. Jesus comes back what we know as the rapture of the church. The Christians are raptured out of this world. They're caught up to be with the Lord. You can read about that in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 or 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. You see, this is what Jesus had promised his disciples back in John 14 when he told them that he was going to go and prepare a place for them and by extension for us. And he would return. He would bring them back to his father's home. This is exactly what the, what the, how it's described as the bridegroom coming back for his bride. We will be transformed instantaneously, Paul says, in the twinkling, the twinkling of an eye. This church age, which can also be called the age of grace, is what we live in today. As far as God's prophetic stopwatch, we are presently living in that time period between the 69th and the 70th week that the angel Gabriel laid out for the people of Israel. We're living in that time period. It's actually lasted about 2,000 years. Jesus identified the age when he declared that he would build his church. That word church, by the, word, by the way, is the Greek word ekklesia. And ekklesia basically means a called out assembly. It's a, it's a group of people that are called out from living like the rest of the world to be able to live how God wants them to live. The ecclesia, the church is not about buildings or denominations. The ecclesia has a head, and that head is Jesus Christ. Each one of us becomes a believer when we repent and we turn to Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the Lamb of God who was sacrificed for our sins. He died, he rose from the dead, and he's sitting today at the right hand of God. That's how we become saved, how we become part of the ecclesia. This is what the Apostle Paul says in Romans 10, uh, chapter 10, verse 9. Paul says, if you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with the heart that you believe and are justified, and it is with your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved. You see, this is the way that all of us come to know the Lord. This is how all of us come to become part of the body of Christ. Now, God's prophetic stopwatch, my topic today, is biblical. The Bible makes a distinction between the nation of Israel and the church. Now, while there are some Jews that believe in Jesus and the Messiah, they're in our churches, the numbers are few. God still has a covenant, however, with the people of Israel, and many promises have not yet been fulfilled, but they all will be fulfilled. See, after the church is removed, God's stopwatch goes click and the seven years of tribulation begins now what's the purpose of the tribulation another great question we have to go back to what daniel was told by the angel gabriel and you can find that in daniel chapter 9 this is what angel gabriel said this time period was about it was to finish transgressions to put an end to sin to atone for wickedness to bring in everlasting righteousness to seal up vision and prophecy, and to anoint the most holy place. You know, the Apostle Paul in Romans chapter 11 tells us that by the end of the tribulation period, all of Israel will be saved. 
The, the remaining promises that God made to the people of Israel will all be fulfilled. God has not broken his promise. They'll all be fulfilled during what we know as the millennial kingdom. This is a thousand year period and get this, where Satan is bound. You see, this is why it'll, the, the earth will be restored almost like it was during the Garden of Eden. By that way, by the way, we will be there as well. And we're not going to miss it. We won't miss it. The Bible tells us clearly that the saints of God that are raptured, that are taken up to heaven to be with Jesus, will come back with Jesus when Jesus returns to the earth, to the Mount of Olives. My friends, Jesus is he's coming back soon. Until then, the church carries on. The church is the hope of the world because it points this lost and sinful world to Jesus. You see, Jesus is the end goal. We are told until he returns to stand firm. Let nothing move you, as the Apostle Paul said, just as he told us about ultimately being changed in a uh, change in the twinkling of an eye. This is what Paul says. This is out of 1 Corinthians 15, 58, and I'll end with this verse. Paul says, always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord because you know that your labor in the Lord is never, never in vain. Amen. Thank you for joining us today. Let me pray. Father God, we want to thank you, Lord, for the opportunity. Nearly every day, it's common to see, read, or hear something about the end of the world, the apocalypse, or end times. Author and pastor Kenneth Baer's The Apocalypse and Coming Kingdom zooms in and breaks down biblical prophecy as it relates to Jesus' imminent return and the coming seven-year period, including the Great Tribulation. Available in both paperback and Kindle versions. Get your copy on Amazon or at Barnes & Noble and select Christian bookstores. The title again is The Apocalypse and Coming Kingdom. You can also find it listed by author Kenneth Baer. Get your copy today. Thank you for joining us on Prophecy Countdown with Pastor Ken Baer. Don't leave without first sharing the latest episode with your friends. Be sure to join us again for the latest updates on Prophecy Countdown.